I'd like to call the meeting to order at this time. And I'd like to, if I may, give just a brief overview of what you can expect. Uh, we've called the meeting to order. There will be an opening statement of the chair, opening statement of the ranking member, opening statement from Chairwoman Waters, uh, witnesses will be introduced. Witnesses will give their opening statements. Then we'll have Q&A of witnesses and adjournment. The title of today's hearing is Protecting Homeowners During the Pandemic, Oversight of Mortgage Servicers, Implementation of the CARES Act. Without objection, the chair is authorized to declare recess of the subcommittee at any time. Also without objection, members of the committee who are not members of this subcommittee may participate in today's hearing for the purposes of making an opening statement and asking questions of witnesses. Members are reminded to keep their video function on at all times, even when they are not recognized by the chair. Members are also reminded that they are responsible for muting and unmuting themselves. I think this is something that's worthy of repeating because I've made the mistake of not honoring this responsibility. Hope that I don't make that mistake today. But members are also reminded that they are responsible for muting and unmuting themselves and to mute themselves after they finished speaking. Uh, consistent with the regulations accompanying Res HRES 965, staff will mute members and witnesses as appropriate only when they have not been recognized and to avoid inadvertent background noise. Members are reminded that all House rules relating to order and decorum apply to this remote hearing. The chair now recognizes himself for four minutes for an opening statement. Let me start by thanking um, the chairwoman of the full committee. It's always an honor to serve under your leadership, Madam Chair. I'd like to thank the ranking member for the participation that he has uh, brought to this meeting. I'd like to also thank the staff for the hard work that you've done in obtaining some 4,000 pages of servicer documents. Uh, this would include uh, policies, procedures, data on the largest 11 servicers. And there are findings that include the fact that over 2 million forbearance requests have been approved by these 11 servicers. And this was done between March 27th and June 30th of 2020. But we've also found some other things that are causing a bit of consternation. Often servicers fail to provide the borrowers with the 180-day forbearance that has been set in the CARES Act. And too often borrowers were given but 90 days. Uh, I have some evidence of this failure to comply that uh, I shall share with you. Uh, this evidence is something that uh, emanates from a request by a constituent. One of my constituents has uh, brought to the attention of our office this document that is styled Temporary Hardship Forbearance Plan Agreement. I won't go through it in its entirety, but the important points are these, that this borrower um, faced a hardship and has had payments deferred for three of the payments that are due, three payments. And the amount due is going to be in the final analysis at the end of the deferment period, the amount due for all payments within that deferment period and uh, any late fees that may have accrued from other uh, sources of payments not being made timely. The point is this, as it reads uh, on this document, the amount due on the next payment due date, which was three months away from the date that the deferment period started, includes the amount of payments being deferred under the plan. Well, this is 90 days of deferment, uh, not the anticipated 180 days that the CARES Act, Act affords borrowers. In fact, many of the borrowers are not made aware of this. And we find, pursuant to some of the testimony that you'll hear today, that many of these borrowers who are accorded this 90-day period, as opposed to the 180 days, they are borrowers of color. It seems that this is, like many other things, having a disproportionate impact on persons of color, which causes me a good deal of consternation, I might add. I would also say this. This program that we established in Congress has been received by the 
um, persons who are charged with according to these forbearance agreements, these servicers, it has been received by them as an honor system. Uh, we never intended for this to be an honor system that would allow them to decide whether or not they would accord persons the 180 days initially with the opportunity to extend for an additional 180 days. It was my intent that borrowers would acquire the 180 days and then they could opt to have an additional 180 days. Uh, the remedy it seems to be that of having to file a lawsuit, litigation, have to go out and hire a lawyer, have to uh, take this to court, uh, have to uh, have some period of time that might go beyond the period of time, quite frankly, that you anticipate having your forbearance. So I'm very much concerned about this, and uh, my hope is that we can get a means by which we can deal with this honor system and bring this uh, under the auspices of a, a situation such that they will have to comply as opposed to choose whether or not they will comply. With this having been said, it was my honor now to recognize the uh, ranking member of the subcommittee for a five-minute opening statement. Mr. Barr.